time to hear a story about the greatest heist in baseball history. This is how the story was told to me, and we've anonymized all the names of those involved, but the events depicted are true. Ish. Well, it's 2003, and one of the best players in baseball, Ronnie Cox, is having an incredible start to the year. He's seeing the ball well, hitting things left and right, and leading the league in nearly every hitting category. So naturally, one night after going three for four with a home run, a reporter comes up to him and asks about his recent success. Ronnie, Ronnie, what a great game tonight. You're welcome, be it. With that home run, you broke the record for the most home runs hit in the first month of any season. How do you feel? What can I f say? I'm the best in the world, 450, dead center. With that, Ronnie, you have 330 batting average, 13 home runs, and 35 RBIs. It's the greatest start to your career. Is there anything you change this offseason? Your swing? Your approach? Boning. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Did you say boning? Boning. Well, you hear it here, folks. Ronnie Cox bones. What is boning? Boning? I've actually had this before. When I was with the Giants, Brandon Crawford is known to be a big boner. <laughs> but like, so he had this bone, like a big, I don't know what kind of bone, it's like a dog bone, what, I don't know what it is. But he'll set up the bat like this, and he would bone the f out of it. Now what it's supposed to do is actually make the bat a little bit more dense. It's more of a theory thing, I don't know if it actually truly works. Right. The ritual was boning the shit out of their bat before the game started. Right. At this time, most players in the league, at least in the early 2000s, boning their bat wasn't what the traditional player would do. But for Ronnie, he boned his bat every single night. So fast forward a couple months, we're now midway into the season, and Ronnie's still leading the league in every stat possible. And by now, the entire team has bought into the idea of boning their bats. The boning technique works for some, but it doesn't work for others. Hey man, I don't think this boning thing's working out for me. Boning every night? Yeah, dude, I'm boning Lintel every single night. Who's Lintel? This is Lintel. Oh, that's right. Maybe you're just not doing it right. Maybe I'm just meant to only lift small bunch of ball. Which, by the way, get your merch at watchmomentum.com. However, for Ronnie... Dinger! King of Nuko! <laughs> he continues to have one of the best seasons in baseball history. But at this point in the season, rumors start to float around the league that Ronnie's doing something much more to his bat and is actually cheating. Coach, isn't that like his third home run of the game? Sure is. everybody! Mother Something ain't right about this. What do you mean, coach? I think that son of a bitch is cheating. Home run! Woo! But like, dude, coach, what do you think that is? It's that damn bat. I think it's gotta be corked. Woo dude, coach, don't you think we should like ask for the bat? Not today. We'll catch those cheaters when it matters most. So fast forward a couple weeks and there still hasn't been any actual proof that Ron is cheating. But one day, while the guys are on the field preparing for the next game, the team's clubbies are making their way around the locker room, gathering uniforms and clothes to wash for the team. And as they're getting the laundry together, they roll past Ronnie's locker and see one of his game used bats sitting there. Hey John, check it out. It's one of Ronnie's bats. Dude, I wouldn't touch that if I were you. You know how Ronnie feels about his bats. I know, I know, but haven't you ever wondered what it'd be like to hit with this thing? It might have enough juice for us to hit a tank. No, not really. I'd rather be on the mound pitching. I know, but have you ever wondered what it'd be like to be like him? I guess that would be kind of cool. Let's go hit with this in the cages before the team gets here. Okay, fine, but only a couple swings. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so they head to the team's batting cage with Ronnie's bat. They set up pit tracks, and instantly they can tell that this bat's got the juice. Are you ready? Yep, let me see one. Dude, how far did that go? 800 feet. No, that can't be right. Throw me another one. Dude, I can't believe it. This bat really has the juice. Ronnie's a genius. Hold on, let me try. <laughs> Absolutely new. All right, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Holy, Holy shit. shit! So for the next 10 minutes, the two of them continue to hit, and they're feeling like Barry Bonds. But by now, the team is finishing up with their warm-ups, so they need to quickly get out of the cage. But for whatever reason, Tucker wanted one more swing. So John throws another pitch. Tucker takes the biggest swing of his life, and crack. Guess what happens? Breaks the bat. He f breaks the bat. Sounds like you too. Yep, I do that often. Sounds exactly <laughs> like you. How bad is it? 
Dude, it's split right down the middle. Yeah, this thing's done. If you're a clubby and you stole a player's bat, you hit with it and you broke it, like what are you thinking? I'm fired, yeah. I'm fired. So the clubbies start freaking out. There's firewood all over the floor. They don't know what to do. But as they're cleaning up the remains for the bat, they notice something very weird on the ground next to the shattered pieces that's not wood. What do you think it was? Pork! <laughs> Absolutely. So that means this whole time he hasn't been boning his bats, he's been corking them? That's what it looks like. I guess the rumors are true. In this situation, if you're a clubby, what do you do? I would probably try to hide it, probably. It's basically a lose-lose. Right, because if you bring it up, he, something happens to him, you're f***ing you because of that. You know Correct. what I'm saying? Like, so you gotta like somehow hide it. If the clubbies go to the manager and tell him what they did and that the bat is corked, they have to admit that they stole a big league Exactly bat, right. Used it on their own. <laughs> right, which is then, completely like not- They're entrusted to take care of stuff. But on the other hand, if they decide to just go to Ronnie and tell him what happened, there's a chance he lets it slide so that no one else finds out about the corked bats. But there's also a chance that Ronnie f kills them and they also get fired. Yeah. So ultimately, they decide the best thing to do is to come clean to the coach and tell him what happened. But just before they get to the coach's office, John has an idea. Do you remember last year, Ronnie gave me one of his bats as a thank you for the long season? Yeah, and what about it? Well, I never took the bat home, so it's in my locker. Okay. Let's just take that bat, replace it in Ronnie's locker, and maybe he won't notice. You think it's gonna work? Only one way to find out. So they grab the bat, sneak their way back into the locker room before the team gets back in, and they try to place the bat exactly how they found it while finding a hiding spot to watch Ronnie's reaction. And eventually, Ronnie walks in, he gets to his locker, and the first thing he says, What the f***? We're f So Ronnie looks around, and he's like, Tucker, John, get the f*** over here! What's up, Ronnie? Everything okay? Did you f do this? Do what? I think I would notice, huh? Notice what? You think I'm stupid? You think I would notice this shit? Doesn't look like anything's wrong to me. Hey, look at this man, it's all shrunk. It's for our babies. We what? what? You f out my King of Juco shirt. I mean, that's our bad man. It won't happen again. Sorry, dude. You better not, because there'll be serious consequences. Ooh. Yeah, we dodged a bullet there. <laughs> we dodged a f***ing bullet. So fast forward, it's now in late September. Ronnie's hitting 350 on the year with 40 plus home runs, 115 RBIs, and is set to be the league's unanimous MVP. But with the season on the line, Ronnie and his team are getting ready for a huge series against their rivals. Who, by the way, are convinced that he's still cheating. Now, up until this moment, the clubbies are the only ones that actually know that his bat is corked. But fast forward to the first inning, Ronnie's heading up to the plate with his boned and corked bat. And as he steps in the box, the opposing manager comes out of the dugout and is fucking pissed. Time, Blue. Yeah, hey, we need a timeout, baby. What the f***? Time! Blue, we have reason to believe that he's using an illegal bat. Yeah, that's some we be cheating. Me cheating? That's ridiculous. All right, hold on, hold on. What's wrong with the bat? That bat right there is corked. I'd like you to take a look at it. All right, let me see it. What the hell is going on? Yeah, I don't know, coach. I don't see anything wrong with this bat. I think we both know it's corked. Get the f out of here. The bat is fine. Bullshit, you liar. The three continue to argue back and forth. And the umpires are unsure what to do. And there's no definitive proof at this moment that Ronnie has done anything illegal to the core of the bat. So to settle this, the umpires decide that they're gonna remove the bat from the game so that the bat can be x-rayed after by an MLB official to determine if the bat was actually corked. The catch is that when they took the bat away, they locked it in a hidden room so that no one could do anything to it. So the umpires make their way back to the field while Ronnie is making his way back to the dugout. Ronnie, what just happened? They took my back, coach. They said it's corked. Well, it's not corked, right? So nothing to worry about. Ronnie. Ronnie. The bat's corked, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Dude. I mean, he's prepared. With no other options, Ronnie's coach is beyond pissed and makes his way down to the clubhouse because he now has to call the GM and let him know what's going on. As he's on the phone with him, there's Tucker and John listening in the conversation. Yeah. I don't have good news for you. What in the hell happened? Ronnie's about to get popped for a cork yeah. bat. What did he say? Ronnie finally got caught with his cork bat. Do you know how many games he's gonna get suspended for it? 10 games? He can miss the entire playoffs? Holy shit, 10 game suspension? Ronnie's in trouble. What are we gonna do? We gotta help him. I have an idea. 
light bulb. So, while the coach and GM talk how to go about the situation, the club is sneak over to Ronnie's locker. And sure enough, the old bat that they placed there is still there, untouched. Dude, you think what I'm thinking? What? There's a reason why Ronnie never touched this bat. Why not? It's from last season. And? That means that this isn't court. Oh sweet, I mean, what does that mean? It means we're gonna pull off the greatest heist in baseball history by switching out the court bat with this bat and saving the entire season. You crazy son of a bitch. I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> so the clubbies take Ronnie's bat. They make their way to see coach. When they get there, they tell him everything about their plan and also come clean about how they actually broke one of Ronnie's bats and discovered that he was actually corking them. And when they finish, the coach is like, Listen up. If the two of you want to go and sacrifice yourselves, by all means, go for it. But the two of you get caught, this conversation never happened, and you both are going to get fired. Yes, yes sir. sir. If you can't switch the bats out in time and Ronnie gets suspended, you're still fired. Yes, yes, sir. You have nine innings to get this done. Don't f it up. Can't fuck it up. So the club is leaving the manager's office and the heist is officially on. The only problem is, is that they don't know which room the bat is locked away in. So they decide to grab some walkie talkies, split up and try and find the bat. Well, just check the office next to the weight room. No luck, copy. Just check the visitor's clubhouse. No luck there, copy. Shit. Did you see anything else in there that might help us find the bat? Copy. No, but I did find some seeds. Jalapeno ranch flavor. Damn it, dude, keep it together. Our jobs are on the line. Copy. You got us into this mess. If I'm gonna get fired, I'm gonna enjoy every last bit. Well, damn it, keep looking. There's no one else that knows this complex better than us. Copy. About an hour passes by, the game is now in the third inning, and the two of them still can't find the bat or the room that it's located in. But just when they're about to lose hope, Tucker decides to check the last place he could think of and makes his way to the umpire's locker room. And just as he turns the corner, he immediately stops, frozen in fear, because standing outside the door is a police officer. Uh, John? Yes? I think I just found out where they're hiding the bat. Copy. Nice. The only problem? Is we're gonna have to find our way past the police officer. Damn. Meet me outside the locker room, let's come up with a plan. So finally, John and Tucker, they meet up, trying to find a way to get by the police officer. John comes up with a bulletproof plan in which he would tie a donut to the end of a fishing rod, cast it out in front of the cop, and reel in the donut to try and pull the police officer away from the door. That way, Tucker could sneak through the door, switch out the bats, and complete this mission. So with John on the right, Tucker on the left, they give each other the thumbs up to proceed with the mission, and John casts the donut across the room, landing perfectly in front of the officer. Oh, is that a donut? Come on, baby. Oh my God, this might work. Wait, stop, come back. Keep going, keep going, you're almost there. Get you know over here, little cutie. Go, 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 go. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Hurry. Dude, it's locked. Oh man, this has sprinkles. I hate sprinkles. A poor mission, a poor mission. Hey, what are you doing? Get away from the donut! Mm, the donut plan didn't work. The donut plan wow. didn't work. It's a great plan though. The good news is that they now at least knew the door was locked. So they just needed to find a way to get the cop to open the door. The bad news was that the game was now in the fifth inning, so there's no time to waste. And after giving it some thought, this time Tucker comes up with a bulletproof plan in which he would sit in the team's laundry basket with a bunch of clothes on top of him, while John, wearing a disguise, would push the laundry basket all the way to the umpire's locker room. Once there, all John would have to do is convince the policemen that they were there to collect the clothes for the umpires to wash, in which he would then open the door, give them access to the room, and they could switch out the bats and complete the mission. <laughs> <laughs> With Tucker in the laundry basket and John in his new disguise, they make their way to the umpire's locker room. Hey buddy, we're almost there. You good? Yep, I'm good, but it smells like shit in here though. Can we hurry it up? Why, hello there, good sir. How you doing? I'm good, what can I help you with? Oh, nothing crazy. I'm just here to pick up the Empire's laundry. If you could just open up the door for me, that would be great. What the f You know, I'd love to, but I've been given strict orders to not open it unless it's for the umpires. I get it. You got a job, I got a job to do. I can't take any more, this smells so bad. But if you just let me in for a few seconds, it'll just be like one, two, three. What the f All right, just make it quick. Holy shit, get me out of this. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, the laundry basket, it doesn't work. The good news is that they now know the cop is willing to open the door, so they just need to find a way to actually make it in there. But the bad news though, is that the game is now in the seventh inning, so they're nearly running out of time. And after giving it some thought, they both come up with a bulletproof plan, in which Tucker would dress up disguised as an umpire, 
and approached a police officer with a large black bag that is used for carrying umpire gear. However, instead of umpire gear being in the bag, it'll be John packed instead. Once there, all Tucker would have to do is convince the policeman that he was there to drop off the umpire gear in the room, in which he would open the door, place the bag inside, and John would be able to access the room so they could switch out the bats and complete this mission. So, with John in the large bag and Tucker in the new disguise, they make their way to the umpire's locker room. All right, man, this is the one. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this thing. All right, here we go. Excuse me, sir. Just a friendly umpire here. Mind if I get in? Hold right there. Have I seen you before? Who, me? No, not at all. I'm just a friendly umpire trying to get into the door. Please work. Yeah, I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of strange people with mustaches around here lately. Well, couldn't be me. I'm just an umpire with a really nice stash. Hmm, prove it. Let me see your strikeout call. All right, I got you, dude. Ouch, be careful, dude. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Let me get this bag for you. Oh, no, no worries, I, I can get that. No, wait, 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 wait. Ah, what the hell, that really hurt. Wait a second, what was that? Oh, oh, that? No, nothing at all, don't worry about it. No, 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 what's in this bag? Oh, I knew it! Your mustache was too good to be true. You liars! Wait, we can explain! No, show's over. If I see you both again, you're both arrested. All things considered, pretty nice cop. <laughs> Just a donut loving cop. Yeah. Unfortunately, the umpire bag doesn't work. And at this point, there is zero good news as the game is heading to the ninth and final inning and they are officially out of ideas. But just as they're sitting there, Tucker looks up in the locker room and notices a significant hole in the ceiling. And he's thinking to himself, I wonder if I can crawl through that ceiling and get into the room. At this point, the clubbies, they have nothing to lose. Desperate. They're desperate. So next thing you know, Tucker and John grab the largest ladder they can find and move forward with their final attempt to complete this mission in which Tucker would climb the ladder, crawl through the ceiling, find the room, replace the bat, and get the f out of there before the game ends without the police officer knowing. All right, dude, it's now or never. How are we looking? I think I'm getting close. How much time do we have? As of right now, we're six outs away from losing our job. Okay, I'm going to my first room now. Copy. Bye-bye. Tucker, give me an update. We only got five outs remaining. Hold on. I'm turning the lights on now. God damn it. What is it? I'm in the girl's bathroom. Dang it, Tucker. Hurry it up. Hello? Is there someone in there? Uh. Just a minute. Bro, what was that? Don't worry about it. I'm already on to my next room. Better hurry. <laughs> You're out! Because we only have four outs to work with. Dude, dude, this is wild. This is, gonna get, this is gonna get crazy. Trust me, I know. So, at this point, Tucker is making his way through the ceiling. He checks in a few rooms with no luck. And by now, the game's going to the bottom of the ninth, meaning there's only three outs remaining. I got this one, Blue. Go ahead. Ha! You're out of here. That wasn't even a strike. John can hardly watch, but finally, Tucker finds the right room with the guard standing outside and removes the ceiling from the wall. And in the middle of the room is Ronnie's cork bat, ready to be replaced. Finally, we made it. We made it. So, he climbs down into the room, ready to make the switch. John, you there? Loud and clear. You in? We're in, baby. I see Ronnie's bat right in front of me. Switch it out. We don't have much time. Up, up, up. Is that out of here? Maybe in an elevator shaft. Only two outs remaining. OK, switching bats out now. Oh sh What the hell was that? Dude, did yeah, you just drop the bat? Dude, it was an accident. Dude, Dang, you alerted the, the cop. You gotta hide. On it. No one better be in here. Hmm. What's going on here? I know you need to be quiet, and I don't want to scare you, but. Hold you, but close me, I'm hacking! You only got one more out until the game's over. As soon as the guard is gone, you gotta move. Copy. So naturally, the cop finally leaves, and Tucker's able to continue the mission as time is running out. So he takes the cork bat, replaces it with the old bat, and starts to climb back up through the ceiling to get out cleanly while the last out was being recorded in the game. But just as he's about to close the ceiling wall, his fake mustache falls to the floor. No. The mustache. The stash. Oh no! What? I dropped my mustache. That was my favorite. You idiot! 
Now they're gonna know it was us. Do I have time to get it? Absolutely not. Got it, got it, got it! Here, umpires are on the way. You gotta get out of there. Are you sure? Get out, now! Okay, I'm getting the f out of here. Meet me back at the locker room as soon as you can. Let's act like we're never there. Got it. So, Tucker makes his way to the locker room just as the umpire crew opens up the door. And it's a good thing he got out of there just in time because alongside the umpires is baseball's commissioner of the league, Sud Belig, <laughs> who's there to check out the bat to see if it was actually corked. They x-ray the bat inside and out. And upon further review, the bat came out clean. Ah. No evidence of ever being corked. Let's go. Oh. However, the one thing that the commissioner couldn't seem to find out is how a fake mustache happened to be right next to the bat that claimed to be illegal. So the commissioner decides to go to the manager of the team and he demands to see the security footage from that day so that he can see if anybody snuck into the room or did anything to the bat. And after reviewing the footage, it was discovered that there must have been some weird glitch in the system as there was no recorded security footage from anything that went on that day. Super strange, right? Yeah. Well, as it would turn out, while Tucker and John were busy trying to break into the umpire's locker room, the team's manager decided to turn off all available cameras before coming out of the clubhouse in the first inning. Team effort. What a dude. <laughs> and with no proof of any illegal actions, rumor has it that Ronnie was never caught cheating and went on to win the MVP award that season. Mm. While the clubbies were never caught stealing and went on to keep their jobs. Nice. The team, on the other hand, went into the playoffs with no ramifications and actually ended up winning the World Series. Let's go. <laughs> Making this the greatest heist in baseball history. Wow. All right, I'm gonna go cork my bat right now. <laughs> <laughs>